and we're on with Mr. Justin Brown. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> What's cracking, fool? Oh, uh, you know, same old, same old. Oh, man. Thanks for coming on, man. <laughs> yeah, no problem, no problem. I'll be feeling Happy bad. Justin comes on straight from work. <laughs> you know? Dude. Non-stop working. Man. Love it. Hitting the streets, hitting the streets. You were on that, uh, on my Vermont bus. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Somewhere around there. 28. We still gotta hit that taco spot, man. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. The Leo's Tacos right over there on Vermont. I'm telling you. Yeah. Gotta check it out. But anyway, I gotta stay focused. I gotta stay focused. What's up, bro? <laughs> you ready to talk 3D? Yes, sir. <laughs> you ever mess with it? Uh, once or twice, I did like, uh, well, I didn't do the bottle trick. I saw a tutorial on how to do the bottle trick where you just draw like half the bottle. Mm -hmm. But besides that, I would do like text, but that's it. And even then I didn't play with much of it. Like I just rotated the text so you can see the 3d, but that's about it. <laughs> that's it. I like the bottle trick though. Yeah, like the it. bottle trick. Um, I was actually I actually just seen it today. Uh, Justin Seeley. I was checking out one of his uh, 3D courses on Lynda.com. Shout out to Justin Seeley. Shout out to Justin. Uh, what do you call it? Lynda.com. Man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was just watching his uh, course all day, man, and uh, he did the bottle trick in Photoshop. Uh, I'd seen it done in Illustrator, and I do it in Illustrator a lot, but I've mm -hmm. never seen anybody do it in Photoshop. That was pretty cool. Nice. So why'd you stay away from it, man? You scared? Um, not really. Why are you scared? I mean, <laughs> I don't know like great uses for it yet. Uh -huh. I mean, besides text, but like, I don't know. I just haven't played around with it a lot. I feel you. I didn't because I don't know. I was worried about the cheese factor. You know what I mean? It's uh -huh. a little bit on the cheesy side. But dude, it yeah. works sometimes. Sometimes it's just, it just you know what? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I so found cool. myself faking 3D text too much, so I was like, you know what? Let me just get over it and uh, jump in and do oh, a proper like. Uh, I mean, because you know, I was trying, I was thinking about doing it for the um, for the off the clock logo anyway, the the writing. Oh. So I was like, cool. Let me just go ahead and learn it. Nice. So um, yeah, let me just jump right in. I'll do a basic one, dude. Um, actually, here, I'll show you. You're right. Uh, the other thing I was thinking of too, because you're gonna do, uh, you're gonna be developing games, right? Yep. Dude, you're gonna mm -hmm. need it. You're gonna need it one day, man. You're gonna need 3D text. <laughs> True. See, so watch like this, dude. Just grab it. 3D. Yep. Boom. It's gonna tell you this. Be like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you just go ahead and you start, man. You just start yeah. 3D, man. Start 3D already. Hell yeah. No. Like, it already it's instant cool right <laughs> yeah instantly cool i love it yeah just something like that i'll just leave it off it's like a crash bandicoot type of thing mm -hmm. nah, I'm <laughs> but here let me uh jump over to this other one to keep it simple all right i'm gonna just do it with extruded text all right all right so let's see let me hit the t key click right here mr justin brown accept that change let me just bring this really big. Nice. Shane Bissell. Yes, sir. <laughs> you gonna shoot people tonight? Uh, yep. Yeah, you know it. Uh, on Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah. I was laughing when you're like, it's not Call of Duty. It's what you call it? I mean, what's the new name for it? What the? Uh, Infinite the Warfare. Infinite Warfare. Like. <laughs> That's all it is. It's not Call of Duty. It's not Call of Duty. <laughs> I had me dying. Let me see. Oh, and your favorite font. Let me see. It's not your favorite, but it's one of your favorite. One of my favorites. Sentry. Yeah. <laughs> it's everybody's favorite, man. It's dope. <laughs> but it, but actually, it works great for 3D anyway, because, like, you know, it's chunky. It's got those nice clean lines, whatever. It's dope. Nice. All right, so you got your text laid out. You probably, you know, I'm going to do something a little bit crazier for my uh, logo, but, you know, I'll keep it simple so that it renders quick and stuff. All right. So it's just as easy as, like, you saw earlier, man. You go to the top. Oh, actually, you want to make sure over here on the right, you have your layer targeted, the one that you right. actually want to extrude. Mm -hmm. Back at the top in the 3D menu, choose this guy here, 3D extrusion from selected layer. Selected layer. All right. Click on that. And then you get this warning, right? Yeah. You ever read it? 
<laughs> you, just nope. run, you just run through. You be shooting through. <laughs> enter, enter. <laughs> so all he's telling you is that it's going to change the workspace. So like currently I'm in the essentials workspace, which is the one you see, you know, uh, when you first install Photoshop. All right. But um, it's going to switch you to a 3D workspace. So hit yes. You could actually tell it don't show me again if you don't want to see it anymore. I just leave nice. it on because I, I, like, I have to teach people sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. So boom, it does it. Nice. It just takes care of it right away. Uh, this is what it was giving you a warning. Look on the right. Uh-huh. The property. Everything changes. Yeah, it just switched oh. up. It's similar yes. to what it was before. It's just, you know, a couple of the panels changed. That's all. It just get, it gets you ready to play in 3D. Nice. Now, for me, so, once I would get to this, I'd be like, I don't what? know what to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, what do I do next? Uh -huh. So, I just wanted to go through some of the basics for this, like, uh, you know, positioning, playing with the ground plane. And then I wanted to show you these other two things. One of them is called mesh, and the other thing is called deform. Okay. I'm just going to keep it that simple. I think, like... Uh, 3D has so many moving parts that like I just want to take it in like small moves or like Philip said yesterday I'm, we're gonna eat an elephant one bite at a time right <laughs> true <laughs> shout out to Philip please <laughs> <laughs> big Phil he's a gangster all right so like right away dude um what, what's your what's your first impression like what would you want to do with this or what, what caused your attention um I would want to create um uh, like a it's not like when, you, well, I guess kind of like when you were a little kid, you had like uh, blocks of yeah. letters. I would want to just stack a bunch of letters on top of each other like gotcha. that. Um, besides that. Um, like when you look at this, like what do you see? Like, um, is there anything particular that stands out to you? That you're like, this is calling my attention? This panel right here, I've never seen this even when I've uh, used the 3D option myself. The oh. panel, like, right next to the move tool. Maybe oh, okay, that's on the, the top left. Yeah, top okay, left. Okay, cool. So this is, this is a view. Basically, we're, uh, I got to learn more about it, but what I'm seeing here is that we're seeing the top view. Uh, it's like if we were looking, like, from above down. Because notice, nice. notice this blue line here. Yep. All right, so when we come over here, that's the Z-axis, yep. right? And see this red line over here? Uh-huh. That is your X-axis. Nice. So this way you have, like... The way I'm understanding is that right now it's an above um, view of, you know, what we're actually seeing. So okay. if, uh, if anybody watching this knows exactly what it is, please let me know. <laughs> nice, nice. Because that would be dope. Let's see. I just realized that I got I to gotta make you a moderator on mine. I don't know how to do that, so we'll do that later. All right, all right. <laughs> but when I saw this, I was like, all right, how do I start moving these things around? Like... All right, how do I reposition? Because it, it looks 3D, but not really 3D. It just looks kind of like something right. in the back, right? Uh -huh. So, Carlos is just showing me, dude, like, just click in the back area, like over here in the sky. Yeah. Just click once right there. See how the cursor changed? Oh. All right. Nice. So, now if I click and drag, I'm repositioning this dude. Oh, sick. I'm actually moving <laughs> it. So, the Earth <laughs> Earth is standing still, but we're moving our little character. In this case, it's, it's the text. Nice. All right. So, I'm just going to offset it a little bit here. Actually, I'll undo that. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you, so that's that, that's actually the positioning part that I was going to show you. Like, this is how you would position your 3D, just by clicking over here and dragging and moving it around. Now that you have that box activated. Mm -hmm. The other thing you probably want to move around is the ground plane. All right? Mm -hmm. This is this down here, the Earth. Mm -hmm. So click on it once, and then you get this, this like, yellow box around the whole scene. Yeah. All right, so now if I click and drag, I'm under it, oh. over it. You know, I'm basically changing like my camera view of this guy, I guess. Nice. So I don't know. I want something like epic, something like that. Yeah. So it's kind of like going off into the distance. <laughs> all right, like so it. so far nothing tricky, right? True, true. But that's all the stuff that was like intimidating me for the longest. Like I just didn't know true. there were so many handles, dude. All right. You know, exactly. and all that stuff could be controlled using these guides in here as well. I'm not uh -huh. going to go through all of those. Like, I'm probably going to do a video just on this three-pronged thing right there. I think it's called a widget. It's 3D widget. Nice. Somebody that knows 3D is probably just laughing at me right now, but it's all good. <laughs> I'm learning, cuz. I'm learning. But um, you could also control this stuff over here on the right, dude, in the, um, in the panels with your property. It depends yeah. on what you select over here. 
So okay. you, you can switch to different views. So look, right now I clicked on current view and notice the properties panel changed. Uh huh. Over here at the top, current view two. I'm gonna switch to watch left. Whoop. Ah. Uh. Top right or top? Oh, what am I saying? Top. Boom. Yeah. See, that was the top view. Now it's matching this guy over here. <laughs> yeah. And there's another thing down over here on the bottom left that I'm not even going to mess with yet. And Carlos is going to teach me that some other time. Nice. But uh, let's see. Vanishing point grid. Let's see. Oh, all right. I just thought I was going to switch to a different one. Cancel. Let me get out of that. Let me see. I'm just going through <laughs> the different presets. Let's see. Camera. Uh, default camera. Cool. So now it just brings us back over here. That's dope. But anyway, man, it's these two first controls got, got me playing around with everything else. First, you, uh, if I click right here with this little box, yeah, boom, I can move this guy around. That's easy. I get that. Sure. Now, if I want to move like the sky and everything else, I get this little yellow box around here. Now, when I click and drag, I'm moving my view. Nice. Boom. I get that. That makes sense. All right. All right. Now, uh, before I go on to the, uh, the mesh and the deform, I am going to show you just real quick some, some of the things that I like over here about this box. All right, All see right. this yellow highlight? Yes. All right, so that tells you kind of what you're going to be maneuvering. Like for me, when I see that big box, it's, it's like I'm going to push. Okay. And it says that I'm going to push on that Z axis. So if I click on it, it's going to go off into the distance following that blue line. Nice. Come back this way, it's coming the other way, right? Yep. Yeah. All right, now see how, how now I have that highlight on the corners? Yeah. Click and drag. And it starts spinning it around just in that corner using that. Nice. This widget has like matching functions with it too. Like you could uh, you could click and drag. I'll play around with this some more later on. But look, over here I got the highlight on the right side. So mm -hmm. we're moving on. Let's see. On the X axis. So now we go along that red line. Nice. All right. So that's kind of just basic functions of positioning and moving it around. I'll go over like the widget and stuff like that in more detail once you know I learn more about it. Nice. But um, I'm keep it real basic, keep it simple. Uh -huh. All right, over here at the top, and the properties see right here it says mesh. Yes. That's what I've been using so far. So in here you got a couple different things you can play around with. I'm gonna change the color of the text. Nice. So click right here. So let's go with uh, your Hermes. Uh huh. <laughs> like that little Hermes style is that cool? You like that yeah, color? That's good. Right. You. Yeah. If not, we could play around with some more over Aww. here. This is uh, Carlos told me this is the exposure right here. Nice. I thought it was highlights and shadows, but it's not. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was wrong, Justin. I was wrong. <laughs> you would. Well, Carlos is the expert, so whatever he says goes. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right, so there. That's pretty cool, right? You can change the color. You're not locked into that, so that's editable. Um, let me see. Oh, the other thing I was going to show you in here is the extrusion depth. Uh -huh. So if you know exactly what you want it at, you could set it in here. Like sometimes you might want to keep it at clean numbers so that it'll be easy to remember. All right. I like sliders. Whoop. Scrubby sliders. Yeah, bro. <laughs> so like uh, right now it's going off into the distance or we could bring it in towards us. Like so I'm going to give us a little something to play with. Noise. All right, so uh, what else? Oh, the edit source. Here we go. That's pretty cool. You can change that to, let's see. Uh, let's go with Justin. I want it all caps, though. Yeah. I was going to put an SB, caps. but I'm trying to write in my name over and over again. So <laughs> you notice uh, that it opened it up like in a different document? No. Oh, yeah, wow. Check this out. See, now we have this transparent thing. Yeah. This is our 3D object. All right. See how I switch tabs? Uh-huh. We'll come back over here to this tab. We are in a PSB document. It's, uh, you know what the B stands for? For uh, Photoshop? No. Nope. Big. It's Photoshop big for big files. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> they use it for big files and, um, what do you call it for smart objects? There you go, for smart objects. Okay, okay. So now when I close this guy, it's going to ask me if I want to save this. I say yes, and then it updates. Nice. All right, cool. Yeah. 
All right, so I'm going to keep it simple, though. I'm going to go back with Justin, uh, just the JB, so that uh, we have something easier to uh, edit. Nice. Let's see. Oh, I thought I could just do an undo. There we go. Nice. Save it. There we go. It's just easier to work with. All right, so uh, extrusion depth. Oh, over here at the top, instead of yeah. playing around with mesh, uh -huh. I'll switch over to deform. And then that changes everything, right? <laughs> That's what I'm saying, dude. There's so many little pieces so many right tools, here. Yeah. Right. But it's cool because it gives you full control over everything. It just means I got to learn what they all do. <laughs> True. I just got to play around with it, really. The more I play around with it, the, the better I get with it. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so I switched over here, and you have your settings right here, dude. You got the extrusion depth, twist, all that stuff. But instead nice. of playing around with these sliders, uh, I figured I'd show you the... Um, this little heads-up display. Oh. All right, so notice, because I had the type tool, all that stuff went away. Mm-hmm. All right, so for the longest, I didn't know how to bring it back. It's just, you got to go back to the move tool. And then it brings oh, it back nice. to that 3D mode. Now I got all access right. to these guys. What are those? You know what, uh, <laughs> what a HUD display stands for? Heads-up display. Woo! Yes, Woo! sir. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, man. So each one of these little pieces does something different. I'll start in the middle and work my way out. Right. Extrusion. Click and drag. So that's what we were playing around with earlier, right? Nice. That's pretty cool. I wonder if I hold down shift, click and drag it. Does it do it faster? Nope. Nope. Same. But that's cool. But anyway, you get that, right? The first one goes out. Yeah. All right. Now, the next mode. Whoop. This little, I don't know, at least little lines of a square. I don't know what you call them, man. Little quadrants, I guess. Hey. These, this is going to take care of the tapering. It actually looks like a tapered edge right there anyway, so that makes sense. Yeah. Click and drag. Check this out. Just the back starts growing out. See how it's flowering out? Oh, snap. What? You can say bad words, bro. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you always scared? That's not how you talk in real life. <laughs> I've heard your stream. I've, I've been on your stream before, bro. It goes up, it goes down. Fatality. <laughs> All right, but that's pretty cool, right? It tapers out. You know what? I'm telling you, I was trying. I was trying to tell Carlos, but he wasn't trying to hear me. I'm gonna make me a little medallion, bro. I'm gonna make me a little rapper oh, medallion. It's gonna be dope. That'd be sick. Uh, yep, it's gonna be made made out of plastic. But I don't care. <laughs> All right, so extrude, taper, and then the next piece. See, now these are like little uh, slices of a circle, I guess. I don't know. That's going to take care of the bend. And that makes sense, too, because it bends. Like, the outer portion of it's actually bending. It's making sure. more sense to me the more I play with it. Cause I've been playing around with this a lot since Carlos showed me. Like, so, dude, I've I've done tutorials on this before. Like, I've played around with it, but I've, I've actually followed uh, step by step. Yeah. Then I've done a couple and played around myself, and then I didn't touch it. This was all like CS6 oh, okay. time. Do CS6 back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> so like it's just been a while since I played with it, and there's some cool new features. All right, so bend. Click on that bend, and guess what? It's gonna bend. Oh, what? But what I like about this bend right here, dude. Is that I'm visually seeing it. I could play around right. with it, dude. Like, I'm in full, like, I get what you see is what you get. Doesn't that look That's weird? Crazy. It's looking at you. It's That's looking at you, bro. I'm crazy. looking at you, bro. I'm going to come around this way. <laughs> now I'm going to see you this side, bro. Like, this is weird, dude. Uh, I got a cool NVIDIA card. I don't know the exact number, but it's NVIDIA graphics card. Um, I just remember it's like in the 400s. I hope uh -huh. that's good. My computer guy said it's good, so. I nice. but that's dope right um because over here i don't i don't know how to con i mean I, I i get it like you move it this way and then move it that way but for, dude the other one's fun man tell me this yeah. that don't look fun you want to try it don't you yeah. you want to try it don't you but um yeah anyway dude the band is super cool i don't know what i'm gonna do with with the band i'm gonna do something with nickelodeon one day maybe maybe they'll like it hey. for that. all right and then the last one is ring it's gonna uh -huh. twist like the ring does hey, this this all makes sense <laughs> see it just twisted out that way nice so bending my twist dude i can make a dope donut or something like that with this you don't know yeah. some churros 
Oh. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'll be too hungry when I do these broadcasts. <laughs> Let me see. But anyway, man, th those are pretty much the 3D functions that I wanted to show you. Um, the last bit of it is, uh, let me see, let me throw a little twist in there just to kind of make it difficult. The last thing I was going to show you is that like once you're ready, like if you're like, okay, this is exactly what I want, uh -huh. over here in the properties panel on the bottom right, you just click on that guy to render it. But before I hit render, um, is there anything you want me to go over again? Is there anything that you, know, you want to see again? Anything you like, you hate? What's up? <laughs> No, no you good? I do kind of have a question. What's up? But I think you kind you kind of answered it already. Um, so you have two letters right there, right? Mm -hmm. Are they like? Can you separate them? Oh, dude, that's so dope. You said that. Yeah, uh, there's a way to separate them, and I'm sure it's easy. Um, uh -huh. I just saw it on Justin's um, uh, video that I caught on Linda Linda Linda.com. Nice. But um, I'm gonna show you that next time. Uh, right. Because I, I got to play around with that some more. You know how I did the um, off the clock with all of them? Yeah. I want to separate each one and kind of have them in different stances. All uh, right. You know, so it, it's like one step. I just haven't done it yet, and um, I'm not going to try it here. Bro, cause all right. Let me see. Actually, I'm going to just take a quick look right here. Play slides. And... Anyway, no, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out and tell you. All right. Hell yeah. Yeah. Other than that, yeah, no, it all, all right. makes sense. I'll get you that one next time. Let me see. Cause yeah, bro, I'm sure it's a way. I, I actually I know there's a way because he um, he did it on there. I just wasn't really. It was like towards the end of the course, so I was like, all right, I I was paying attention more to this extrusion stuff. But I'll get back nice. to you on that. All, all right. right. So the last thing is, yeah, dude, the render thing. So um, click on this guy and go. Notice on the bottom left, it tells mm -hmm. you where the progress is. It's a little. That little helper text will go away. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a simple one. I think it should take like maybe six or seven minutes to do. Nice. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and make you watch watch it happen. <laughs> All right, what right. I am going to do, though, is while this is happening, I'm going to play around and show you uh, um, my tip of the week. Nice. Tip of the week, bro. You ready? Yes, sir. I keep forgetting you can't see me. I keep thinking you can see me, and like, I'm like, I'm like pointing at the camera, trying to be aggressive. I'm stunting on you too. I got my uh, my Adobe Max hoodie on, man, trying to floss, but you can't even see me. I forgot. Mm -hmm. You can see it later, and then then feel stunted on. How about that? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right. So um, my tip of the week was uh, talking about custom lookup tables. Oh, I guess I can't do this. Well, I was hoping I could let this run in the background while I played around with it, but guess oh. not. But anyway, the way you stop it is you hit escape, uh -huh. and then uh, it just ha it just gives you whatever you're left with there. Um, I actually did it earlier, and it was a clean one. Uh, I should have left it. I should have saved it to show you, but anyway, I know that for next time. You. Let's still jump into my tip of the week, bro, because I think you're going to be able to use this. Uh -huh. And for real, for real, tell me if you're going to be able to use this, man. If you think it's, it's boo-boo, just let me know. <laughs> then do the Kendrick uh -huh. version. <laughs> you think you can do that? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, uh, have you ever heard of a 3D color lookup table? No. Nope. <laughs> so, a uh, 3D color lookup table is uh, it's used a lot in film. Okay. And the way they do it is like, man, you know, you shoot a movie through like, uh, you know, um, several different days, weeks, months, years, whatever, different situations, different times, right? Right. So. Uh, what you do is you color grade them or you, or, uh, you use um, color lookup tables to make sure they all have the same coloring. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the basics of what I know. I don't know too much about it. I, I studied it up uh, a while back and I learned a little bit about it. But the cool thing is they started bringing that capability into Photoshop. Nice. So, um, you know, I have a couple shots of these different cathedrals and I want to be able to apply several of these adjustments. See these guys on uh -huh. the right? Yeah. All right, so what I could do is apply several of them to one mm -hmm. and then create what's called a color lookup table. Now, you already have that as an adjustment here. Have you ever seen that? Nope. All right, cool. Let me bring out my panel. Bring it out over here, make sure everybody can see this. All right, cool. See this little icon here, color lookup. And when you nice. hover over it, it tells you you could uh, create a new color lookup adjustment layer. If you click on it, then it gives you this weird, I don't know, 
um, drop down menus and stuff like that. I was expecting to see like icons of like colors or something. I was like, all right, all right. It's just letters and numbers. <laughs> but if you click on the drop down menu, you get this cool list and it gives you an idea of what's going on here. Now, does any of, does anything here look familiar to you? Um, I just know the name Fuji, Kodak, and yeah, all, right. That's it. all right, cool. So when I click on them, it basically, it tries to match that Fuji profile. Oops. Wow. Let me see. So if I click on this drop down, it's trying to match that. Same thing with all these guys. Um, now for me, because I don't know anything about the individual Fuji and Kodak models and stuff like that, the ones mm -hmm. I went to right away, I was like, all right, what's like, uh, the first one that caught my attention was, uh, what was it? Something bleak. Futuristic uh, bleak, boom. Nice. Oh. <laughs> so right away you get this cool fut uh, futuristic bleak look, almost like a, almost like a matrixy look. Yeah. So if you shoot something on your phone, even though if you got your phone, I know you don't got a dope phone. You got a BlackBerry, <laughs> right? You got a BlackBerry? You got the curve? I wish. <laughs> but, I um, wish. you know, you shoot something with your phone or whatever camera you got available, and then, you know, you could edit it in Photoshop because you're already familiar oh. with it. But then it looks like a camera phone video, right? All right. And then, you know, you could probably try to throw some Instagram filters on there, like a VHS filter, <laughs> something like that. But, but you know, you could use these, these uh, lookup tables to kind of get different looks. That's it. So check this out. Let's see. Moonlight. All right. Uh, what else? Uh, night from day. Slight difference. Mm -hmm. see, I'm trying to find something. That, uh, soft warming look. There's like some good morning ones in here. Let's see. Uh, let me see tension green so it's like do horror flicks we could do horror yeah. flicks tension green um, crisp warm but you start to get the idea right these are all different looks and you could create your own look by using your adjustments in there so nice. like um, let's see fall colors you know that that was I don't know exactly how they created but you could kind of get that effect by using several of these adjustments mm -hmm. but then what happens if you want to apply it to several different images Maybe maybe you want to use it on a future project. Nice. So that's where this comes in handy. A long-winded way to try to tell you why these these are uh, these are cool. Hey. <laughs> I want you to like these, Justin. I want you to like them, bro. <laughs> I like them. All right. So first, I'm gonna make my my own look. I'm All gonna right. make my own look here. So I'm gonna start off by throwing the black and white. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm all about drama, bro. Hey. But I'll lighten things up because I kind of like that it. Uh, it brings these highlights here in the middle. It kind of adds focus there. All right. So I'll run with that. <clears throat> Over here in the adjustments, I'll switch to uh, color balance. Uh, right. The reason I, I tend to go with uh, a black and white, then add a color balance, is um, a lot of times I'm trying to create like a feel. A feel okay. or something. So in this case, I want to red things up, but that kind of is almost scary. So I want to kind of start brightening things up and then backing off, kind of bring some yellow. I don't know, I'll play nice. around with this. Maybe not so much magenta. That was kind of crazy. <laughs> More yellow. I kind of nice. like that. You know, we start getting this old school sepia tone. It's super played out, but whatever. Um, but I, I kind of like it. It, it. it really changes things. Let's see where we started off at. All right, so that's what we have from, to start. Mm -hmm. And that's what we end up with. Oh, yeah. With the black and white, too, I also sometimes I'll back off on, uh, on, it, on the opacity a little bit. Kind of nice. gives it like a faded picture look. Mm -hmm. all right so now i mean dude you can pile these on i want to add like two more just to kind of make it seem like it's worth it you know so nice. uh, i like playing around with levels to mess things up <laughs> you would yeah i would i would all right let's bring this guy out all right there we go play around with the mid-tones a little bit see like when i bring it to the right look drama bro look at that drama yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's pretty cool. And then I'll see what the curves could do. I like doing on image adjustments. Uh -huh. So like, I don't know if this is kind of like a big highlight portion to me right here in the center of the cathedral, right? All so right. I'll click and drag. If I go up, just bringing those highlights up. If I go down, oh my just God. darkening those. I didn't know you could do that. Oh, that's cool. Happy to help, man. Happy to help. You're welcome. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Look over here. You. See the darkness? Like, see how we got some details? Yeah. If you want to remove them, right, 
You just make it darker, oh. bro. You start playing around. So, uh, actually, I'm creating like a funky curve over there. That's why you see all that gray come out. Nice. But anyway, they're not making a mess of things right there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'll clean it up. And start back to default. There we go. But uh, grab something. Uh, use this guy. Uh huh. Grab something dark. Make it darker, or make it brighter. Nice. That type of thing. All right. Anyway, I'll do the adjustment that I wanted to make. I want to lighten this up a little bit, and then just darken some of these guys slightly. It always creates a little bit of an S curve in there, just a slight one. S nice. ends up creating some drama. Everybody does it. I just kind of do it. Overdo it. <laughs> I'll be doing Love too it. much. <laughs> All right, so let me see. Uh, let me X this thing out real quick. Cool. All right, what other thing do I want to pop? That's it, man. We got four different adjustments there. But can you imagine like having to do that every single time for these guys? That's kind of whack. It, it I mean, kind of takes me back to when I was young, messing with Photoshop, mm -hmm. <laughs> adding a bunch of different adjustment layers and like trying to transfer it to images and never could yep and then that styles you would use you should use styles for that which i can actually I can show. actually here i'm gonna put that in my thing over here photoshop oh, remember all the time I was, I was making a list of stuff for quick tips that could be one of them photoshop styles nice thank you man styles why can't i spell style <laughs> all right styles styles was that the dude from uh team wolf you didn't watch me, Wolf. You a baby could. Anyway, back to it. <laughs> all right, so I got all four of these, right? So just like you said, back in the day when you were a kid and you used to, like, try to match this up for all of them, yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to export these four uh -huh. as a uh, custom color lookup table so we could use on the other images. Nice. All right, so you go over here to the top and the left, go under File, Export. All right, and then the option you want is this guy over here, Color Lookup Tables. All right. All right, click on that, and then you get this guy. Now, oh, I can't move it around. All right, it's going to stay right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know why. It won't let me move nothing. Let's see. I wonder if it froze on me. That'd be dope. <laughs> oh. I don't know. Maybe. Can't cancel? Oh. Cancel, cancel, cancel. I don't know. It just died on me real quick. Come on, Photoshop. Don't be a jerk. Uh -huh. The weird thing is it brought the type tool up. Let me see. Illustrator's working. So that's cool. Nice. Photoshop's here. What's up, Photoshop? You back? <laughs> I don't know what it did. Let's uh -huh. try that one more again. Export yeah. color lookup tables. It brings this dude up. Uh-huh. And then it freezes on me for some reason. Dang. Interesting. I don't know why. That's weird. It was working for me earlier. What I'm planning on doing though. Oh, there we go. I got access to it again. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and run with it. <laughs> for some reason, it wasn't. Um, I don't know. Uh, my machine in particular uh -huh. has been having issues like dealing with multiple windows stacked on top of each other. So I'm gonna blame it on my machine for that. Uh, all right, but now that we got it back, thank you, machine. <laughs> now that we got it back and running. Um, oh, I, I keep messing up by trying to move that window. Uh, I'm going to just leave the window in its place. <laughs> right here, dude, uh, for the description, this is where you would name it. Nice. So I'm going to leave it cathedral because that's kind of what we base it off of. Copyright mm -hmm. info. If you need to put some info in there, go for it. I asked Carlos about what he uses for the quality. Uh-huh. I sometimes go to high, but he told me he just leaves it set to medium. It's no big deal. I don't, I don't see a reason to go to maximum. Uh, somebody mm -hmm. else might for their particular workflow, but for me, I, I play around between medium and high. All right. Now, formats. I know a little bit about that. What's important about this is cube is the one you need if you want it to function for, uh, for Adobe uh, products. All right, all right. All right, these other formats are good to keep checked. Like, uh -huh. let's say you want to pass this off to somebody. All right. Because you don't know how they're going to use it. Mm -hmm. True. So that way you'll have these, these uh, additional formats. The only one we need is cube, but we're going to export all four. All anyway, right. so next, I'm going to just click OK. Hope it works. It does. <laughs> nice. Let's see if it gets mad at me for moving. All right, cool. <laughs> I swear, it's, it's my machine. I'm going to blame it on my machine. 
Uh, what you're doing here is trying to find out where you want to save these guys off. So save them in a location that uh, you know you'd be able to find later. All right. All right. Last chance to change the name. I'm gonna hit save. Nice. And it saves it. Dope. All right. So and now what? How do you use it? Yeah. How do you use it? <laughs> do you just do you just go to add a color lookup Let's go. table? Walk me through it, bro. Chart. I got this other image right here. Uh huh. What do I do next? What you do next is go to channels on the side. Is it channels? Nope. Or adjustments. 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 Yep. Right here, adjustments. And then you go to the it's the middle row, last one in the row, color lookup. Boom, color lookup. And then what you want to do is find cathedral three. All right, how do I do that? That top drop down. Cool. Click there. All right. And it's not there. Cool, right? Now that's dope, because that's the first thing I thought too. I'm like, man, where is it? You right. actually have to click on this where it says the where it says load 3D LUT. Ah. It just kind of confused me because it already has that on there. Right. So it's just weird that you know you gotta bring the flyout menu to choose that option that was highlighted. But you know, uh, that's just how it works, you know, whatever. So right. now you go in through like if you're on a Mac, you would be using Finder. We're using mm -hmm. our Windows Explorer here, so you just find the one you're looking for. Nice. Notice there's only three here. I mean, there's only one here. One. You. Yeah. All right. So what I want to do is I'll bring it up over here. Let me see. Cool. I'll bring in this. This is my regular Explorer. Nice. Basically, my finder, my folders, whatever. Oh. But this is where they are. Nice. They're all in here. The reason I don't see these guys, uh -huh. remember I was telling you it's a, in Adobe World, they use the dot .cube extension. Yep. So that's why we don't have access to the other ones because it's not going to access it. Nice. I guess you could drop down here and look for it. Oh, look at that. I just saw oh. that. There it is. Nice. That's a trip. And it'll find each one. That's pretty cool. Awesome. All right. But anyway, I'm going to go with this one because I know it's safe in the Adobe World. I don't want to venture out too far. Uh -huh. I'll go hit load. Wait a couple seconds, boom. Dope. It's crazy. That's cool, right? Because over here on the right, it's just one single color lookup. All right. And what you see here, this is an icon for color lookup. This is a link between color lookup and um, your mask. Mm -hmm. You know, you can start masking this away. Like if you only want this lookup table to show up in certain <laughs> portions, you could do that. Nice. That's actually going to be one of my uh, tips as well. I think I got it listed here. Yeah. Justin, you can see it because you see the background stuff. Uh -huh. See right here where my cursor is? You. Yep. Nice. Proof, proof. I was already thinking about that. <laughs> hey, yeah. Hell yeah. So now I, know, now I know to bring it up higher as a priority. <laughs> nice. All right. But, um, but that's dope because now you're just dealing with it as one single, um, one single color lookup that you could use again for future projects. You could send this off to somebody else so they could use it on theirs. Like, you know, we could Dropbox share it or something like that. Sick. That'll be cool. So here, one more time real quick. I'm going to do it on this one. Nice. So the way you do it is you have a background image. Well, it doesn't have to be a background for this part. You go into your adjustments, find color lookup, click on the drop down for load, and then click on the word load 3D LUT. Then you find your, the LUT that you want to use. Click load, wait a couple seconds, do a little dance. Bam. You with it? <laughs> See, it wouldn't work without that dance, bro. It was not going to work. <laughs> Got that little shimmy. You got a little shimmy down. That was dope. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool, right? You got that single thing to play around with instead of having to make one, two, three, four different ones. Right? <laughs> Every time. Trying to match it. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, that's cool, really right? dope. All right, for sure, bro. For sure. That's all I got, man. You got any questions for me, bro? Um, kind of. What's up, what's and up, it's, up? it's completely left field of what we're talking about. Not really, but it's still, okay. it's not, we didn't go over it. Um, you remember how I said I used to do that, like, when I was younger. When you were a baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had to try to redo it every time. Back then, I was using, um, it wasn't adjustment layers. Uh, I would put a solid color on top of something and then I would uh, scroll through the 
I don't oh, know what it's blend called. modes. Yeah, the blend modes. Is that like roughly the same or is it like completely different? Nah, they're different. They're different. Uh, I can see why you think they're similar because it's basically changing the look of them. All right, right. Um, just so I could make sure I know what you're talking about here. All right, so I'm going to turn off this color lookup table. Mm -hmm. I'm going to create a new layer mm -hmm. over here. All right, so like, let's say we wanted to give this like, oh, I don't know, we were playing with red earlier, so let me do a red tone, right? Mm-hmm. Let's see, uh, control backspace, nope, alt backspace, there we go. So you get this here, right? Yeah. And then you would come to the layers panel and click on this drop down menu and go through all these guys and see what works best, right? You. Yeah. That's not bad, man, a lot of people do that because it's kind of hard to figure out exactly what the result's gonna be. All right. Uh, a lot of the pros have told me that uh, one thing you wanna do is first set your opacity uh-huh kind of get that set first and then jog through your blend modes right so i tend to do that sometimes like maybe back off on this a little bit or you could do it the other way but I, I, they've, they've they've suggested i start off with the opacity first nice. um let me see so right. let's, instead of clicking on the drop down menu and going through each one of these which you can uh -huh. you know and then right now because i'm on a windows machine see how right. it's highlighted uh-huh hit the down uh, arrow key a bunch of times and it cycles through them nice. is that kind of what you did you exactly <laughs> that uh, cool another thing is um what do you call it you could also how else did i do this oh uh shift hold down shift uh-huh and uh let me see what is it shift plus or minus i think it was right oh huh. yeah shift plus or minus the only reason it wasn't working was because it was actually highlighted that was interesting nice. see how it has that blue highlight around there you so for some reason right now the keyboard shortcut won't work oh so i'm gonna hit enter on my keyboard notice it goes away uh-huh so now i'm gonna hold down shift minus yes. and uh. it's going backwards it's going up, <laughs> it's going up the the list nice if i uh. hit plus it goes the opposite direction all right so quick breakdown on what these guys are thanks for bringing this up by the way it's, uh, yeah. it's a topic that I'm, uh, I'm not an expert on none of this stuff, but like, this is something I do know uh, a little bit about. And when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit, not, but so check <laughs> it out. So normal and dissolve, normal is just going to show you the color as is right here. We have it at hundred percent opaque and red. Mm -hmm. So it's just going to show it solid. That makes sense. Right. Dissolve. Like if I had another image on top, like it, you would start seeing some of it start poking through. I think if I add, I think it has to do, there it is, with some of the transparency. You see how oh, some okay. of it's starting to show through? Yeah. There you go. So you started having that dissolve come in there. And these guys are grouped in there together because I think they don't, I think they would be like in a league of their own anyway. So right. that's why they're in this group. Notice how they're sectioned off. You. Yeah. When I started looking at them as sectioned off, it started making more sense to me. Like right. uh, I started grouping them. So this group over here. Uh-huh. These are all shadow effects. Nice. They all have to do with darkening things. All right. See this over here? Yeah. These are lighting Light. things. Yep. So these are our lighting effects. Nice. Over here, this deals with contrast. Oh. It'll start affecting the con. It'll add contrast or remove some contrast, stuff like that, or go crazy with the contrast in some. <laughs> of them. Then these are like special, uh, uh, special. Like this is math. Difference, exclude, divide. Like they actually are using each other to add and subtract portions of there. And then down here, these are applying colors, different ways to apply color. These uh -huh. are all actually like now the technical side of it. That's where I don't know because this is actually all old school, real world stuff. It actually is go going back to like to for real lighting, lighting and gels and stuff like that. So nice. for someone who knows about lighting, this is their wheelhouse right here. They love that. Yeah, they'll know all <laughs> about this. I just know bare minimums of it. So like one trick I like to do when it comes to uh, blending modes is I'm gonna hit Control J, basically uh -huh. just to jump that layer, makes a copy of it over here. Uh -huh. um, I like to go to turn it into an overlay. Notice it's yeah. one of the contrast. Mm -hmm. All right, so click on overlay. You just punch Fire. this piece up. Hell yeah. So here's like the before and the after. What it's doing is just adding a lot of contrast on there. And let me see. So here's a soft light. That's kind of a softer version of the same thing, right? Nope. So hard light 
and kind of you know so you start kind of maneuvering with those these are all, vivid light and that's that's a gang of contrast right? <laughs> right then your light's similar but it's a little bit different i don't know the difference between them two and then you go to pin light it looks like there's light contrast right like it that was like yeah. the least amount of contrast that i've seen so far hard mix is like super contrast and then we switch <laughs> to a different but like you see what i mean like i'm i, I don't know if i'll go through all of them but like you start getting an idea of what, what they do there right you know what i mean so here it turns right. off so a lot of times that little trick works out for me i'll probably do a soft light on there and then use the opacity to back off on it a little bit now nice. you just see a, a slight difference between them like it's crazy right yeah it's right there uh let's right. see um i want to try something else with you here we go i'll target this top layer mm -hmm. and then maybe multiply see how it's doing things like um Multiply is the first one I go to as like a, a darkening type of effect. Mm -hmm. It's affecting like the shadows, but let's see what screen does. So now screen's like affecting like the highlights. It's highlighting things. So you kind of start seeing the difference there. Yep. So even though I can't tell you the specific differences between every single one and why they're affecting them and how they're affecting them, I can kind of tell you how to work with it a little bit. Like, yeah, I, would just I never knew that. Yeah, I would say just click on the drop down menu. Know that these are going to darken things. These are going to lighten things. This is going to affect the contrast. I wish I could tell you a little bit better. Uh, I wish I had a good example of this, but you get the like hue, saturation, color, and luminosity. Those are going to affect the colors there. Yep. So, you know, at least you'll be able to maneuver with those with a little bit more confidence. But, you know, we could nice. definitely cover that. Like, that could be like its own full topic one day for sure. All right. Um, what else? Oh, one other thing. What I thought you were talking about before uh -huh. was something like, I'll turn the background off. And when you double click on the layer, you mm -hmm. get these layer styles. Oh, yeah. And I thought you were talking about these. So, like, you know, you could add a, uh, you could add a color overlay, mm -hmm. gradient overlay, pattern overlay, you know, mm -hmm. throw all these guys up on top of each other. And see, there are all three different effects here. You. Yep. But what you could do is save them off as a style over here. And then oh, you always boy. have access to all of them. So, like, I mean, this isn't an effective one because they're not, like, interacting with They're each other but, right. but you get what i'm saying it's kind of the same principle that we used for the uh adjustment layers layer. over here to create Cover a look up. lookup table nice all right you with it yeah you're not with it i don't know if you would i'm with it <laughs> now that was a good question though man thanks it's, uh so yeah man if, okay. is there anything else that stands out to you you want to go over no, no, that's all. That's all. For sure, for sure. All right, man. So that's what we got for uh, Photoshop this week. Uh, so tomorrow, I'm going to end up uh, making a video on ba on the basics for this. I'm gonna do it on my YouTube channel. I'm gonna just go over the the basic things we covered, which is the positioning of uh, your 3D, uh, right. repositioning your ground plane, or the you know the camera view. Mm -hmm. uh, and switching between those two features, which was the mesh and uh, the deform, because I like that in the deform you get that heads-up display you play around with. Yeah. And that's all I'm going to cover. I'm not going to go too deep into it. I just want kind of want to dip my toe into it. All right. Uh, hoping that will give people some confidence to play around with 3 3D themselves. Nice. Uh, and then next week I'm going to jump into Illustrator. Uh, damn, there's so much going on next week. Next week we got Michael Mondragon coming on. Nice. Be talking illustrator stuff with us i know carlos is hoping to come on i think next week if not the following week he just wants to do it already i'll let him do it whenever he's ready um <laughs> i told you about this last night he has um uh, a emulator uh connected to his machine so that he could uh run photoshop version one and show Sick. us what that was like My God. um what else man um and I'm actually excited to come back into Photoshop soon because I do have a couple things I want to cover in there. Nice. Um, what else? Uh, dude, any suggestions on Creative Cloud apps that I should check out? Um, no. No? All right. Well, uh, think of it for next time then. All right. Because um, the, the reason I'm asking is that, like, you know, I was thinking about it today. Like, dude, uh, everybody does Photoshop. Uh, I love Illustrator. Illustrator is my thing. But, dude, it was started like in the 80s right, like, right. you know uh so it's like kind of old school so i'm still gonna mess with it but like man i should be trying out some of these other tools they got True. um 
Let me see. I don't know. They got they got some cool tools coming out. What I'm what I'm thinking about playing around with is this guy here, Character Animator. Nice. All right, because like I love Illustrator. Mm -hmm. So why don't I create something in Illustrator? All right. And make it move using True. Character Animator. You know what I mean? All right. So anyway, trying to mix things up. So Car Carlos challenged me too. He's like, hey man, let's try to play around with some different tools that we never played around with on here. And, uh, you know, uh, anyway, I'm gonna look into more creative cloud apps in the future instead of just sticking to the two that I live Ooh. in, you know? Nice. I like with it. With that? You. Yeah. All right. You got anything crazy going on over uh, in the in the Hermes, Hermes world? <laughs> um, I will be streaming later on, probably in an hour or so. Cool, cool. I'm gonna be checking in. I... Nice, nice. Thank you, thank you. Um, the thing I love about your stream, dude, is your music. Your music, <laughs> your reactions are dope too. You, you but like, oh, yeah. hey, but I don't know. It's fun. Like I don't know nothing about Call of Duty, <laughs> but it's dope, man. I like watching your stream. So yeah, you'll right. be on later on tonight. Yep. You know, around ten, ten thirty. What you got planned? What you doing? Some one on ones, some team uh, stuff. Probably. It depends. If the team is on. I'll play some 3v3s. Right if it's just me, I'll play some pubs and then some 1v1s. Right on. No. Shout out Smurf. <laughs> Smurf and the hummus. <laughs> and I like, I do I want to make you a Let's Go t-shirt? You, you know, I got to make you a Let's Go t-shirt. Is that yours, dude? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's all of the whole Call of Duty community. Because I like you it. Let's go. I'll be, I'll be hype. You be like, Let's go. I'll be like, let's go. I don't want it. I'm over here like doing some nerdy shit and then i hear you say let's go and i get hyped <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right, man. is there anything in particular you want to see in uh illustrator next week dude um hmm good question because i was thinking of doing 3d text and then since i since i played around with it in 3d here yeah i was gonna say compare and contrast all right cool it's funny because like i did 3d and illustrator two weeks ago like but on my own like behind the scenes on like nice. a project that i can't share it yet oh. and so it's, it's just uh i, I don't want to downplay it. it's dope it's uh videos for astute stuff uh they're always working on new plugins so they're always they always got me working on videos nice. but um one of the videos i was working on with them i i um i did some 3d for illustrator uh and uh and so that's why when Carlos was like, dude, what do you want to learn in Photoshop? I was like, let's do 3D. Nice. So, yeah, let's throw it back in 3D for Illustrator. So I'll probably do 3D Illustrator next week. I got so many videos I want to do, man. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Let's nah. see. But all right, dude. So if y'all are about that Call of Duty squad, let's go life. Uh, <laughs> make sure you check out Justin Brown. Hit him up on Twitter. His Twitter face ID is over here. I don't know how to say it. So say it, bro. Say it. Laissez-faire. Woo! Laissez-faire. Yeah, yeah. Laissez-faire. Yeah, Laissez-faire. Yeah, no. Hit up Mr. Laissez-faire. Uh, also, check him out on his uh, Twitter feed. Go over there, make fun of him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell him to shoot people in the face. Yeah. And let's see. And then for me, make sure you uh, go to my YouTube channel. That's the main thing. Just go to my Ooh. YouTube. If you don't go anywhere else, go to my YouTube channel. <laughs> Go yeah, over there man. and watch all the videos all the way through, and we'll be best friends forever. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, man. That's it, man. So you said no more questions. You good, right? Cool. I'm good. All right, man. So you good. Let's get out of here, man. I'm going to go ahead and finish right. that off because I'm starving, fool, so you know what I'm about to do. Taco. Oh, taco life. <laughs> <laughs> I love Gotta it. Give me some tacos, man. It's the perfect food. True. True.